This episode of the QA is brought to you by the Rainier Arms Apex Club. Hey guys, my name is Dave Tim. Thank you very much for checking out the November 2018 edition of the QA for Guns and Tactics magazine. Before we get rocking and rolling with all of our awesome questions, make sure you are following us online at gunsandtactics.com and on all of our social media outlets. And of course, if you want to submit your question for the show, you can send it to the email address shown below. That is the QA at gunsandtactics.com. That's the best way to get your question on the show. And then of course, one lucky question asker will receive a prize from our sponsor, Rainier Arms. All right, let's get rocking and rolling. Number one is from James Jones. As someone brand new to the silencer suppressor world, my 10 month wait ended just earlier this, ended just this week, I naturally have some questions. Well, it is natural to have questions. Oh, about the tax, okay, here we go. Anyways, when I take my silencer out, under what circumstances do I need to have my tax stamp available for presentation? I hope you are able to answer my question for me. I love the show, looking forward to watching it grow. Thanks a lot and have happy holidays. Hey, thank you very much for watching. Happy holidays to you, I hope all is well. And I really do sincerely appreciate the questions, James from uh, Columbia. So, first things first. Number one, uh, technically the tax stamp, or your form four in your case, is a tax document, which technically means it's private information. You only have to show it basically to you, the IRS, or the ATF. Now, I will say that's the technical legal side of it. It's a tax document. However, in some states, and I don't know if your state has this or not, but in some states, it basically says owning a suppressor is against the law, except it is a affirmative defense if you present your proof of tax paid. So in some states, they actually require you to have it upon demand of a peace officer to basically keep you out of jail. Uh, I've heard of other circumstances where range officers, they'll see you shooting with a suppressor and they'll say, hey, I wanna see that. Now, technically you don't have to show that to them. You're not legally required to. However, it is their house, their rules, and they might say, well, hey, we don't want you to shoot here. So the reality is, uh, number one, always carry it with you because you never know when you might get stopped by the ATF or something like that. Number two, you never know when you might get stopped by a law enforcement officer who doesn't know all of what they should know. And sadly, there's a lot of cops out there who don't know a lot about NFA law. And believe me, I'm speaking as a law enforcement officer myself. I try to educate as many other law enforcement officers. I've done training, whatever. But there are some cops that just don't know the rules. So sometimes having that stamp can help keep you out of trouble. But I would recommend this. Number one, take your original, put it somewhere safe. Number two, make copies of that so you can have a hard copy with you. I have a copy of all my stamps in my range bag, plus I have a digital version on the cloud that I can access on my phone, on my tablet, whatever it might be, so I can have it with me, whatever. And if you're worried about certain information, nothing says that you can't redact a little bit of personal information from a copy, you know, like home address, whatever it might be that you don't want to share, and that way you could show that to range people or whatever it might be. Because I understand your home address, where you keep your items, you don't necessarily want that you know, floating out there anyway. But under no circumstances would I let anyone make a copy of my tax stamp, whether that be a local range or anything like that, for sure no. And I've heard some ranges saying, hey, we wanna have a copy of your stamp on file. No, not gonna happen. So hope that answers the question. All right, number two. Uh, this is from Christopher. Love, your Love the channel. Wanted to quickly ask what brand paint pen you use to mark your rifles and set screws with. Great question. I use the Sharpie. Um, I use these guys right here. Uh, it's the Sharpie brand oil-based paint markers, and they come in all sorts of different colors. I mean, like literally, I have I have all sorts of different colors for all sorts of different projects. Uh, why do I have so many colors? Because I have a kid who likes to do arts and craft stuff, but the reality is uh, they work out really well. Make sure you get the oil-based, not the water-based. If you get the water-based, water can make it run, but if you get the oil-based, it works really well for marking your set screws, marking witness marks, whatever, but then an alcohol pad, uh, alcohol wipe, denatured alcohol, whatever, is all you know going to clean that right up. So Sharpie, oil-based paint markers. I love them. Number three, what boots do you recommend for someone who has to run in them? They must be black and take polish. This is from Quentin. Quentin, awesome to hear from you, man. It has been a long time, so I hope all is well. Um, that is a good question. Now, here's the thing. Boots are very subjective. What fits you may not fit me. What fits me may not fit you. So I'm, I'm going to say use a little bit of caution and do some review and some, you know, kind of re do some reading, do some reviews, things like that. And ideally, if you can find a vendor that offers a grace period, uh, like a free return period or something like that, or at least free shipping both ways, that way you can try it on at home, walk around in carpet and then send it back if it doesn't work out, that'd be ideal. That being said, 
I've really been happy with a pair of Danners that I have, and I was a, a long time Danner fan. I used to wear their Acadias, and then I just found them heavy and clunky, and I went away from them to kind of more of the tennis shoe style boots. Um, I've tried Under Armors. I like them for comfort. They were kind of like a sneaker. They took a polish. Uh, the downside is they did not come in a wide size, so I didn't like them as much, but they were really comfortable, the Under Armour. And the other downside with the Under Armours is they just didn't hold up very long over time. Uh, I had to basically buy a pair every year. But now I'm also running a set of Danner. I want to say it's called a Kinetic, but it's a, a very comfortable boot. It's a high boot, takes a polish, very lightweight, flexible. So I've been impressed, plus they come in wide sizes. So those are kind of what I would, would look at, but the Under Armours, um, those were really comfortable and very shoe-like, so totally, totally able to run and things like that. All right, number four, I have a CZ SP01. Can you get a holographic green dot or red dot for this pistol? You must have to take off rear sight, maybe, cheers, Heath. Uh, well, maybe you do have to take off the rear sight. However, with that particular gun, I'm not aware of any, like, factory option that came with it. So with that one, you're probably gonna have to look at getting it milled. So you'd have to send it off to a machine shop or a gunsmith that would mill the top of the slide to the footprint of the red dot you would prefer. Right now, I'm a big believer of the Trigicon RMR as being the toughest, most robust handgun sight on the market. So that's probably what I would recommend for you. Now that is our first half. Before we get into the second half, we do have to give a shout out to the Apex Club from Rainier Arms. For one low price of $99 a year, you get free ground shipping and an exclusive discount on all of your cool favorite new stuff from Rainier Arms. Now Rainier Arms carries all of the cool stuff for AR-15s, but they're also expanding into precision rifles, handguns, and more. So if you like it, if it's cool, if it's new, chances are Rainier Arms is going to have it and you can get exclusive availability, discount pricing, and free ground shipping with all of your orders for Apex Club members. This could easily pay for itself within the first few orders. It's the big box awesome discount club prices with free ground shipping on all of your orders. What's not to love? The Apex Club from Rainier Arms. And of course, they are sponsoring this month's episode by giving away a prize, which we'll get to later. All right, number five. I have bifocals on my glasses, so I use the lower bifocal to see the sights on my gun, but then can't see much of a target. So maybe there are better sights on the market that address my issue with vision. And that one's from Jim. Totally legit question, Jim. Number one. Uh, I did do a video at TriggerCon of a glasses company, and I'll try to find a link uh, if I can remember, but they actually had a separate lens or correction up at the top. So instead of you know shooting like this with bifocals, you could actually have more of a modern shooting stance and look through the top of the lenses. I thought that was a really cool idea. And then the rest of the uh, glasses, I think they offered in a prescription. So that was an idea that kind of popped in my head with this. Otherwise, yes, a red dot sight. And you didn't specify if it was handgun or rifle, but uh, a handgun, and I don't have one handy, but what's nice with shooting a handgun with a red dot is as you are on target, you are basically looking at your target. So you're focusing at target distance on the dots there. You're looking through the red dot at the target. Same thing with a rifle with a red dot as well. So I would definitely recommend red dot. And in fact, what I've been seeing with some students, especially those with aging eyes, uh, They've picked up the red dot on the handgun and they've liked it for a whole lot of reasons specific to their aging eyes versus me who still luckily has good eyes even though both my parents don't. But uh, I just like the red dots. I think that I, I truly now think it's the future. I've been running it hard for almost a couple of years now and it's just a great, great sight system. I, there's a ton of advantages. So I would check that out. All right, number six. This is from Ryan. Uh, I have an issue with a PMAG that is fully loaded with 30 rounds. It won't stay into my PSA lower. I have to take one round out so that it will stay in the lower. What could the issue be? Well, here's the thing. When we load a mag full, it doesn't give room for that spring to compress much. I'm positive if I had your rifle here, I could you know, force that mag and it would stay in there, but it's difficult on a closed bolt. So here's what I recommend. Number one, load all of your 30 round mags to 28. Okay, that gives just a little bit of the room for the rounds to compress a little bit so you can come, uh, you can insert that mag on a closed bolt and it'll seat just fine. It just is good for the mags. It's it, just 28. It's kind of industry standard. I know some instructors will say, I load a 30 round mag to 30 rounds. They don't call it a 28 round mag. They call it a 30 round mag. Yeah, that's great. Good for you. Rock on. I load 28 because I like the little buffer that it, 28 rounds gives me. I can insert it easily. I can do tack reloads. I can do whatever it is and that's just fine. Now, Crazy enough, I heard of a small town police department, and no shame, I'm a small town cop myself, 
that loads their 30 round mags to 20 rounds and their 20 round mags to 10 rounds. Seriously, stop, this is just crazy. Just no, load your 20s to 18, load your 30s to 28 and rock on. So that is what I'm guessing the issue is. You could look at adjusting your mag catch tension a little bit, but I really doubt that's the issue. Um, I would just load your 30 round mags to 28 and I'm guessing you're not gonna have any problems. All right, number seven. This is from Triple Helix. I think you've asked some questions before. How hot is too hot when it comes to rifle barrels and guns in general? What indicators do you look for when you're on the range to let you know that it's time to let the gun cool down for a bit? Uh, shotguns, they can heat up after a three gun stage or a jungle run or whatever, they get hot. Uh, rifles get hot as well. Here's the thing, heat can damage barrels. There's a reason why companies like JP have thermal dissipators, but I'm a firm believer if you go out and just mag dump, mag dump, mag dump, that's harder on your rifle barrel than that same amount of rounds or even more rounds over a period of time where you're not as hard on the gun as far as heat. Now, sometimes in training classes or whatever, you're gonna run volley drills, you're gonna go through a loadout. I get it, it happens. I've done it, I still do it, I teach it, whatever it might be, depending on what it's appropriate for. So, how, long, how hot is too hot? Um, it's not that hard to heat up you know, a rifle barrel to the point uh, where it gets hot. Now, I would say after, if you're gonna shoot a couple hundred rounds in a few minutes, yeah, it's probably time to let that barrel cool down. Now, if you're, someone's gonna post, I guarantee, or think about like, well, what if the zombie apocalypse is occurring and I need to go, okay, the zombie apocalypse is occurring. Do what you gotta do. Remember, headshots count when it comes to the zombie apocalypse, of course, standard zombie rules. But uh, I would say if it's too hot to the touch, we're getting there and, we want to be cautious. Also be aware that if you are shooting suppressed, things like that, the suppressor can heat up and cause you to burn and stuff like that. Another thing with hot rifle barrels, be careful where you set them. If you set them on a case or uh, next to something or whatever that can melt, it happens. Uh, I've seen people, true story, I saw a guy lean his rifle up against his truck tire and then Sure enough, a few seconds later, he started looking and he had a nice little melting mark in the side of his tire because his muzzle device was that hot. So be cautious of that. All right, last but not least, when does the A5 come into play? And now this question was on our buffers and springs video for the AR, which again, has been a great video for us. We've gotten a lot of views, gotten a lot of comments, things like that. So his question is the A5 system made by Voltor. For those of you guys that aren't familiar with it, it basically takes a standard uh, AR 15 receiver extension and it makes it longer. So they're basically using a 308 receiver extension and then they're using buffers that are a little bit longer in springs specific to the system. And I'll kind of sum up, summarize that question with also including a specialty spring product like the JP silent captured spring system. So now we're taking away from the standard carbine buffers and springs and now we're moving to kind of what I like to call fine tuning system or enhanced systems. No doubt, the silent captured spring system or the A5 are improvements over the standard buffer and spring system. There's a reason why they came out and there's a reason why they're popular because they work and they're better. They can help reduce felt recoil. They can help improve cyclic rate. They help feel, you know, have the gun feel better. Uh, they are an improvement. In my three gun rifles and even one of my marksman rifles, I run the silent captured spring system. I've ran the A5 before. They're great systems. So when do they come into play? I would say it's for the person who knows what they're doing, or maybe it's the person who's kind of beyond just taking a box rifle and just you know plugging and playing with swapping a couple of parts. You're building and you kind of want to build from the ground up right. Then you might want to look at the A5 or purpose. So let's say you're building a marksman type rifle where you want it to shoot smooth. Maybe you're building a competition rifle. You want it to shoot smooth, low recoil. You're going to be having a low mass carrier, an adjustable gas block, whatever it might be. Or maybe you're shooting suppressed. And again, you're building or you're okay with upgrading that budget then that's where the A5 or the silent captured spring comes in. So definitely a legit question, definitely legit offerings. I highly recommend them. But again, for the average consumer who's gonna take a rifle off the rack, add a light, add a sight, add a sling, and maybe look at swapping out a buffer, I would say it's probably not for them. But uh, you know, kind of more for the more serious shooter, serious student, the builder, you know, that kind of thing. I hope that answers your question. Maybe I'll do a separate video on enhanced buffer systems. All right, now let's get to it. We're gonna be giving away this bad boy right here, which for those of you guys that don't know, this is the Rainier Arms Mars made in combination with Battleline Industries. Now this particular one is the Magazine Advanced Release System, of course, so it's an Ambi Mag Release for Gen 4 and Gen 5 Glocks. So this will fit 17s, 22s, 19s, 23s, 
34, 35, Gen 4 or Gen 5 Mars for Rainier Arms. This is an awesome, awesome prize. Not cheap, they don't give these away. These are super, super nice. So let's do our random number generator. We had eight questions make it to the show and we will give away our prize. All right, the random number was number two, which question number two was from Christopher uh, about the paint markers. So Chris, hey, <laughs> Chris, you know what? I'm even gonna throw in a paint marker. You let me know, I think I have uh, I have green and blue. So Chris, I look forward to hearing back from you. You win the Mars from Rainier Arms and you win a paint marker. So if you wanna see your question make it to the show, please submit your questions to the email address shown below, the QA at gunsandtactics.com. That's your best way to get the question on the show. And again, one lucky question asker gets a prize thanks to our sponsor, Rainier Arms. Make sure you are subscribing to all of our social media outlets. If you've enjoyed this video, please hit that subscribe button, hit the share button, hit the notification bell. We'd love to see you in future episodes. Thank you very much for watching and have a great day.